There's a certain joy I get from skirting around the rules in an environment where it should be impossible. Of course I'm talking about cheating in Stardew Valley. Previously I talked about 10 different exploits in the game that you could perform in different versions. Today, I've got more for you. Also, I'll be putting in the top left which versions of the game each exploit is possible in, just so there's no confusion. Without further ado, last time I talked about getting out of bounds and skipping barriers with a chair. What I didn't explore, however, is combining the two. Normally, the mines won't open up until day 5, due to this boulder blocking the way. We can get around this, though. First, we're going to get out of bounds by continually swinging our scythe. We covered this last time, but just remember to keep a good rhythm and make sure that you get a good amount off screen before you start moving. I've used this bottom exit instead of the left because the left has a barrier that can push you back if you have bad timing. Down here, you don't. All right, now it would appear that we are finally outside, so I'm going to start walking up. You can see my skin. I'm actually going to move a bit farther out. And we're going to walk all the way over to the other side. All right, once we reach this chasm, we're going to walk down into it. Any sprites that have any kind of texture to them, you won't be able to walk through, just if you're curious. And now we can use the other trick to use the chair to get through. And just like that, you can get into the mines on day one, when normally you'd have to wait until day five. If you need to get out, you can just leave the same way you went in. Put a chair here, jump to it, and you're out. Recently, I experienced the problem of needing one more item for the museum, but I was just not able to pull it. So I sought out other methods. As it turns out, what you get out of a geode isn't completely random. There's a set order of items that you'll get, and this order progresses every time you open a geode of any type. So let's say that we are trying to get a thunder egg out of normal geodes. We'll open five of them. And no such luck. We got 10 coal, copper ore, five more coal, limestone, and orpiment. So what I'm actually going to do is just go back to the title and restart the day. Now, just to prove that the sequence is always the same, we'll open up the first one and it should be 10 coal. Sure enough. So now what we can do to progress that sequence of items is open up four of any other geode type so that we get to items six through 10 on that list. There we go. And now the four items that we get out of these four geodes should be different. Well, still no thunder egg, but we did get four new items and we would have gotten five if I hadn't used the 10 coal just to show you that it's the same. You can keep repeating that as much as you want until you finally get exactly what you need. But if you really want to take this to the next level, there's a site called Stardew Save Predictor. On the site, you can enter your save file, which is usually stored in percent app data percent, then Stardew and saves, and the site will show you a lot of the so-called random events coming up. This includes being able to see a full list of all of the items you'll get soon from any type of geode. It'll show you what certain floors of the mines will be special and when the train is going to come. It's kind of startling how many things in the game aren't just a straight up dice roll. And yes, I'm counting this as an exploit since it's taking advantage of the fact that these events aren't truly random. What the predictor won't tell you is what you'll get from artifact spots. Luckily, there's a way to cheat them as well. So let's say we're here in the desert, we need a golden mask. Let's see what's in the artifact spot. Four bone fragments and two stone. All right, well, we could change that. Once again, just like with the geodes, we're gonna exit to the title and we're gonna open it back up. Now what we'll do is hoe one other spot, then hoe it up again. Now we got to clay. While it wasn't the golden mask, it has a similar way that the geodes work. We moved the set of items that we were gonna get forward by one. I find this to be especially useful for Ginger Island when you're trying to hunt for all of the skeletal pieces. Did you think we were going to get through this without a duplication glitch? Think again. One of your big end goals in the game is to get these four candles lit at your grandpa's shrine so that you can get the Statue of Perfection, which gives you a steady supply of iridium every single day. If you ever lose this statue in any way, maybe you blew it up, you can get another one whenever you want. 
there's a way to exploit this, of course. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place this all the way down here so it won't magnetize to us while we're at the shrine. I'm going to fill my last slot of inventory, and then I'm gonna break it. When it's in this state, it does not count as in your possession. And as such, you can get another one. You can do this as many times as you want to get as many statues of perfection as you want. So now we have two inventory slots full. Break both of these. They're both sitting on the ground. Empty an inventory slot and another one. This process will get more and more lengthy as you go through more and more statues because you'll have to place all of them and then do all of that again for each one. But infinite iridium, that's a pretty good exploit if I've seen one. Multiplayer has many tricks to it. One of them is whenever you make a new character, there's a few things that they get to get started off. For instance, 15 parsnip seeds and a set of tools. So let's add a second character to the game. I'll make a new farmer real quick. And here they are. For the price of 100 gold, 15 new parsnip seeds, which isn't crazy. However, we do have an entirely new set of tools. They also get one of each of these special rewards that you get for doing special orders, such as a mini fridge. Oop, there's a sewing machine. There's a mini shipping bin. A deluxe fish tank. And all of that just completely for free. That ain't it. We can also come over here to the museum and get a second piece of every single reward. Most notably being magic rock candy, crystallarium, star fruit seeds, ancient fruit seeds, all completely replicable every single new character you make. And of course, you can just get these items, put them in a chest, toss this character to a side, add a new character over and over again. So that's unlimited amounts of items for many different things in the game. And there's probably a lot of things that I'm not thinking about that you could probably duplicate with this as well. But if you know of any of them, please let me know. One of the older, most well-known glitches in the game that doesn't work anymore was bringing a green wallpaper to the desert, carrying it to the middle of the pillars, and you would get the galaxy sword as if you were carrying a prismatic shard. While that specifically has been patched out, the issue that caused it in the first place, which is the wallpaper being the same ID as a prismatic shard, is still in the game. There's one place where you can still utilize this, and this is in the Lost Bundle, which is in the broken down Jojo Mart after you've completed the community center. This plain white green wallpaper can still be used to fill in the prismatic shard. That is, as far as I know, the only use for replacing a prismatic shard, so go wild. To finish this off, let's talk about berries. There are two sets of days that spawn berries on bushes, salmon berries in spring, and blackberries on fall. The amount of buried bushes that spawn is determined randomly. Now, I couldn't tell you why. You know what, let's get an example here. Here's an empty bush, there's a filled, there's another empty, okay. So empty, 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 right? I couldn't tell you why, but if you reload your day on one of the berry days, there will be more berry bushes. Now I don't remember which one it was that I pointed out that didn't have berries, but that didn't have berries, one of these didn't have berries, there will just be more berries. And you can keep reloading your day over and over again until every possible bush that can have berries has berries. As I've said many times, I believe berry bushes to be some of the best early game energy sources out of anything ever, because you can just simply get such a ridiculous amount of them. And this multiplies that by quite a bit. And that will do it. I'll be honest, I don't know if there's really any more exploits to show at this point. I really had to look around for these. If you haven't yet, you can watch the previous exploit video that has 10 more exploits. Otherwise, let me know if you know anything that I still haven't shown. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.